So hello and uh, to all, to the chief guest and to all the participants. So, yeah, so welcome to this uh, program, to this event. So we are organizing this event to, uh, let's say, to fulfill one of the principal commitments of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. And also this is to promote the religious harmony in this world. Our world is the home of many religions, so many religions in the world. So we need harmony and we need happiness and peace. So we are organizing these kind of events. So today we have uh, our chief guest, Raksha Jain. Welcome to this event. And she is a leadership trainer. And uh, she, is, she is the lead trainer of Rakshaki Kakshya, which is uh, an organization uh, to train uh, individual and uh, public. So she has uh, delivered training to diverse audience across India. And she is a skilled public speaker. She has achieved awards like national trainer, best speaker, and so forth. So we are very fortunate, what say, fortunate, and we are very privileged to have a speaker like Rasha Jain with us. And uh, she will speak today about Jainism, how Jainism promotes religious harmony. So we are very eager to hear from her, from her. And we are very eager to, what say, get knowledge from her experience and his, her, what say, speech. So uh, this event will be, uh, what say, live streamed on Facebook, and it will be translated into Tibetan by our two translator, Chambalutu and Tenzin Tarji. They will simultaneously translate the event into Tibetan. So many, let's say, from two society, the participants can be English speaking society and Tibetan speaking society. So our event is, uh, let's say, it has uh, three sections. First, the welcome address by moderator. It's me, so right. So the second one is uh, the speech second by Raksha Jain, and it will be followed by question and answer. And at last but not the least, there will be the word of thanks by our head of English translation department. So please, Raksha Jain, start your speech. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, before I start my speech, uh, are you, do you all hear, understand English or even uh, uh, here we have people who don't understand English? Most of us uh, speak English. Uh. Okay, thank you so much. I'll be uh, uh, sharing the screen in some time. And before that, I would like to thank you all uh, for giving me this opportunity to talk about uh, my religion and uh, uh, Jain, uh, Jainism. It was an honor to receive a call from you people and uh, talking about uh, such vast and huge uh, religious uh, by name Jainism is, uh, I feel very proud and privileged uh, to be speaking about Jainism today. Okay, and uh, before I start and go further, I'll be sharing the screen with you all. Okay, are you, are you able to see the screen now? Yes, yes, we can. Yes. Thank you so much. So as I said, Jainism in itself, as we, you were talking about uh, religious harmony, how do Jainism uh, you know, promote religious harmony? Jainism itself, if at all, most of the people who ever know a little bit about Jainism knows that uh, the basic and the core thing which we believe in Jainism is that Ahinsa. Ahinsa is uh, what we call uh, not uh, troubling any any living thing which is seen or even unseen. So to directly connect it with the religious harmony and world peace, I would say that uh, Jainism itself is uh, other name of uh, saying that uh, world peace because uh, we completely, uh, Jainism completely believe in Ahinsa and that is the first principle what we follow in Jainism. 
okay so i thought that you know because jainism is so huge and so big that in a half an hour i may not be able to uh, tell too many things about it but the core principles what we follow and which actually and directly um, which contributes to the world uh, religious harmony at the same time world peace one thing is non violence that is ahimsa and we strongly believe mahavir swami uh, the 24th uh, tirthankara of uh, jain jain dharam has told us that you know live and let live was one of the um, thing given by him that uh, saying that you know every every being every living thing on this earth has the right to live their life the way they you know so we believe strongly in this core thing that live and let live so what do we mean by live and let live and first of all to i to understand ahimsa itself we take there are things which you know people think that ahimsa means directly killing uh, not killing someone or not killing any uh, human being or living thing maybe but uh, ahimsa is more far further and uh, than this we also believe that everything you know there are so many things in uh, around us in our surroundings which we cannot see with our naked eyes which science also believes in but then we we try uh jainism and especially the monks in jain they try not to uh, promote even the tiniest insa which can be avoided so they they usually try to cover their face and cover their mouth before they even talk because the tiny uh, things which we you know we cannot see with our their small bacteria and the small uh, living things which we cannot see with our eyes even that has to be uh, that ha that should not get troubled by our uh, talking and walking or so many other actions so we believe ahimsa in so many other perspectives we see ahimsa in so many uh, things so many uh, other ways of seeing just not killing or uh, uh, you know uh, any uh, human being or animal maybe okay so ahimsa uh, we strongly and we very strongly believe in this ahimsa now there is uh, so many things in this also to understand you know that how will we promote ahimsa so one thing what the uh, jainism follows not just the monks but the, any jain for that uh, matter follows is we we do a prayer in uh, sitting in one place called samayak okay samayak is one thing wherein we uh, we sit at one place for 48 minutes one mohurat we call it one mohurat and 48 minutes and we do not do any actions with our words or maybe physically and we try even to control our thoughts during that 48 minutes and we we take a pledge and we sit in one place and pray and uh, uh, we we uh, do samayak so this is also one way of promoting ahimsa in that 48 minutes at least will not walk around will not talk to people will not do anything which may create any disturbance or any uh, you know uh, any hinsa or any violence towards any living being so this is one kind wherein we practice ahimsa and then next we come to anekantvad so what is anekantvad a very very interesting thing you know we believe that no single specific statement can describe the nature of existence and absolute truth so what do you understand by this you know when i say that anekant means anekant word means multi dimension or seeing one thing with different perspectives that is what we call anekant word now have you anyone of you have you heard about anekant word any time before no i have not <laughs> yeah we to know actually it is you know uh, looking at thing we, we don't say that i am right and you are wrong right everyone may be right in their own terms in their own uh, perspectives in the, everyone may have their own perception of living uh, looking at things so this creates you know directly we can relate this to uh, world peace as we all talking about the re religious harmony that in jainism we strongly and very strongly believe in anekantvad that is you know i don't say that only my religion or what i follow as a religion is one thing which is right and other people may be are wrong but we believe that what i think about my dharma is right but 
looking at other if at all i come to your place and see if at all i see buddhism or if i go to a place wherein you know sikh follow their own way of dharma so if at all we look at things we we strongly believe that everyone has their own perspective of, about look at looking at things and nothing can be uh, you know true in one only in one way that is if at all i am standing here if at all i i write this if i show you on the screen if you all can see what do you see this number 6 yes i can yeah. see in it is written so nine yeah six right and if at all we stand from the other direction and if we see this what do we look what the what does this look like number 9 exactly so am i right or wrong here saying that you know this is 6 or 9 so it is all about the perspective the way we look at things and what we believe in you know few things are made to be uh, which everyone all the dharmas all the religions believe strongly is what is right and what is wrong right we do all believe in some uh, few things which we say it is right and right and that is maybe it is wrong but in jain dharm we feel that everyone everything everything created by uh, the almighty whatever it is you know has their own existence their their own way so their own nature and everything is absolutely true so this way this this is one of the best way to look at you know no nobody can be completely right or nobody can be completely wrong so to go a little deeper in this we'll have to understand many things you know but uh, because as i said i'll be talking for a very limited time now and i'll only be giving small introduction and brief about the things which we we can elaborate and we can talk about in the later sessions so anekantvad anekantvad is the is something which is promoting or maybe if at all we look at this and we uh, we try to understand there is so much so much to uh, say and uh, everything you know everything whatever is uh, existing connects to this that every human being or maybe not just the human beings every living thing has a direct thing that uh, saying that uh, everyone can have their own perspective their own way of thinking and their own way of looking at things and it is not just about the religions about other things as well okay and then the next thing what i was i wanted to talk to about is i'll go a little um, a little more deeper in this not uh, too much but yes we also believe that uh, one second okay now the next thing which i wanted to share and i wanted to tell about jainism is a parigra again this also directly from directly says that you know this this if at all this one practice we all try and practice in our lives everyone on the earth then everything you know all the other problems related to not just the religion but other things as well will come to an end forever now i'll i'll tell you what a parigrah is a parigrah is uh, you know letting go of all the attachments not just uh, about uh, for the things what i uh, what i think i have about the people about the emotion and about the outcomes it is making yourself free from uh, uh, processing things you know uh, gathering things and accumulating things for you maybe it is just the things or maybe about the people the feelings the emotions everything it is about you know uh, if at all suppose what do we actually live want to live a life we just need um, in hindi we say kapda roti kapda and makan you know the basic things the shelter the food and the water whatever we drink these are the basic and the very common things which we all need to live a life normally right do you all agree with me for this yeah but what do we do actually you know as we grow up when we are kids we know that what we want we want a little attention from maybe the parents and a little attention from our um, uh, people around us and as we grow up a little 
we want a little more attention from our uh, friends maybe and the parents and a little more things which we can call it is mine they say suppose uh, this book belongs to me this person belongs to me this is my friend and i'll not be able to share this with someone and especially about the things we need everything you know and slowly and gradually we we, we don't uh, come to we don't have a threshold to what we want actually and then this is the one thing which promotes for all the distractions for all uh, for any uh, for the war which are happening around us if at all we see any war in between the countries if we know that this is my um, you know boundary and we 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 stop ourselves there then where will be the need for any uh, war or any uh, that you know this country this boundary and a little more i want and if we talk about the smaller things if at all suppose that i make a threshold for myself that some day when i earn maybe a particular amount of money say uh, 10 crores if at all i want 10 crore uh, for my living i'll not make more money i'll not keep more money for myself with me anytime then what do we understand by this that we have a limit we have a threshold which we have created for ourselves so this aparigraha siddhans applies on everything it is we in jainism believe this very strongly and we have a small vows which we take that in after this particular um, amount of uh, money suppose i want for my living entire life if at all suppose i keep a threshold of 10 crore 20 crore or whatever amount and beyond that i'll not need even if i have if, even if i'm getting that i will not use that for myself i'll not keep it with me for myself i'll use that or utilize that money or maybe for uh, society for uh, uh, you know for something good but not for myself and this way we we do a paragraph for all for all small things we have a uh, we have an bara vrat we call it uh, bara vrat niyam which we take and we believe in that that everything can be limited for ourselves and once we start limiting ourselves especially when it comes to things i think so many other things which will come to an end you know uh, the fights the religious distractions which are happening maybe there are so many other things which are happening will come to an end if at all we start limiting ourselves and we can limit ourselves in many ways you know many uh, if at all uh, to start with suppose i have uh, say 50 dresses to wear if at all i have 50 dresses then i may limit myself not to have the 51 for one year for maybe two years i can manage with the those 50 dresses and if at all we talk about jain monks they they follow these panch mahavrat we call it five mahavrats which are you know which limit them with everything and uh, they uh, they very strongly believe in uh, satya to speak truth always if at all they they don't know anything if at all they they don't go to courts and uh, uh, you know uh, give uh, that i'll be the uh, what they call i'll be uh, talking about or maybe i'll take um, i'll witness something because either they have to tell only the truth they believe that you know you, they have to speak the only truth otherwise they'll not talk at all and that, that is why they believe in this satya and ahimsa they have limits for everything they they don't use vehicles they don't uh, travel they if at all they have to move from one place to another place they'll only travel that is they'll only walk and go anywhere they'll not use any kind of vehicles to reach from one place to another and if at all for any emergency suppose for any um, sickness or something they have to use some vehicle then they make sure that they they take uh, some you know uh, they um, in a simple language i can say a punishment for themselves which can uh, reduce that karma which they have created by using the vehicle by using the vehicle they'll be um, promoting to uh, they'll be doing some kind of hinsa the tiny uh, in maybe you know the bacteria the living beings which we know we cannot see by eyes that will be more killed by when they travel when we all travel by uh, maybe car and train and bus and all that so they they avoid that and then they uh, strongly believe in brahmacharya and uh, you know they don't uh, 
have any relation with any uh, um, they don't marry basically and even if they are married and then they take they come into this diksha then uh, they'll not have any connection they're all the all the living beings all the all are my brothers and sisters that like that it will be they'll have no direct relationship with anyone and acharya they'll never never ever take anything from anyone without asking them you know even if they have to stay in someone's house they first stand outside the, they'll ask the permission to the uh, of that play, particular owner of that place and then they'll, they'll ask if at all we can stay here for tonight and only then they'll if the owner uh, permits them only then they'll enter that house otherwise they'll not stay anywhere they'll not use anything which is not which uh, anyway they believe that there nothing belongs to them you know the only thing the supreme thing which is um, which is mine is my own atma my own soul and only that soul belongs to me and whatever karma whatever actions i do okay and with that action only i can go to the ultimate uh, destiny of my soul that is moksha so to to reach there they follow all these things um ahinsa acharya aparigraha they never keep anything with them you know even if they want they uh, they usually take bhiksha for uh, their uh, food and they'll only take that much that they can eat at one time and finish it off they'll never have they'll never carry anything with, with them uh, once they finish their food and after sunset they don't do they don't eat at all and they don't drink the water as well so they don't keep water with them and food with them other things are like not even needed so this is the way a jain monk follow their life and we who are shravak we are called shravaks we are not monks we have not taken diksha but we try to follow a certain things which jainism always promote for and that is why we follow anuvrats that that, that is small uh, you know taking the vows or taking some uh, uh, in smaller uh, portions as i said aparigraha is one of them okay aparigraha can be done with the things what belongs to me and I'll, i'll threshold um, the things which belong to me for certain extent and after that i'll not use that it can be about traveling it can be about keeping the things it can be about um, uh, jewelry i be, uh, that belongs to me and everything for that matter and cutting yourself you know this de uh, de detachment from the things will definitely promote for the world peace and the harmony which we are talking about so this is all what i wanted to share today as i said that jain dharma is something very huge and very vast which if at all i have to i feel i am uh, you know a very uh, very simple person maybe to explain what jain dharma is and what jainism is but i tried to talk about a few things which we this as i you if at all you have noticed i have taken all the three words which starts from a so if at all we talk about jainism and the whole alphabet then only a and this that two only three things from that i have been uh, i tried to share with you all and uh, it was as i said it was uh, nice and uh, very you know it feels it gives me a immense uh, thing uh, i i feel very privileged and proud to talk about even these three things about uh, jainism and uh, if at all we go further some day you know and we have more time then uh, we can always uh, talk about other things in jainism and uh, this is what i only wanted to share with you all so uh, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity and uh, being here with me and to understand a little uh, you know maybe a one drop of uh, what we call the huge uh, jainism is all about thank you so much thank you thank you Rajesh Jain, thank you so much for speaking about uh, Jainism, for sharing on uh, some important points from Jainism. Thank you for the uh, living harmony of the world. Thank you so much. It's very inspiring. So I think there are so many similarities between Jainism and Buddhism. So maybe it will come in the question and uh, answer session. So. it is a next session it is the question and answer session so if uh, is there anyone who want to ask any question please raise your hand
Is there anyone who want to ask any question? Can I can I have one question, please? <clears throat> yes, yes. Okay. Whenever you please uh, ask. Uh, before a few years, I went to the Sharam Belogala. So I think uh, it's a gentleman place. And I don't know, is, is the exact place the, which is to start Jen's religion from there, or is there any other place? What is the exact place which uh, where from the Jen start exact place? I mean, you mean uh, Jainism started from there, you're, you're telling? Yes, yes. No, 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 no. Uh, Jainism, it is only one of the temples or, uh, you know, Bahubali, the, um, uh, you st see that uh, statue? Yes. So that is not of any Tirthankar. Jainism, we we uh, we have uh, twenty four Tirthankar as we call, and the right. la the first one was Bhagwan Rishabh Dev, and okay. after that, uh, you know, I mean, so many years, and the last one was Mahavira, right. Lord Mahavira, and this is the statue of Bahubali, one of the disciples of uh, uh, Mahavira. And uh, this is one of the temple which, you know, uh, where he attired, uh, maybe, you know, uh, it is not from there where Jainism started. Jainism has their roots from ages, you know, it is uh, 3000 years, maybe around 2500 or 3000 years ago. Uh, okay. I have to be, uh, you know, if, um, maybe I'm right about this. And uh, we, it is uh, not here. We have so many other Tirthas in, uh, abo, uh, in, abo, uh, in Jainism. We have Palitana, which is in Gujarat, and uh, there are so many other places wherein we have uh, the temples of these uh, Tirthankaras. So it is not the place where Jainism started. No, it isn't. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can I one more question, please? <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. Uh, according to Jainist religions, uh, I heard they believe and is all tree and all grass they have the soul, right? Sorry. <clears throat> according Jain religions, uh, uh, tree and water and stone, all these things have the soul. Isn't it? Yes, they're all living things, yes. Living thing, right? Living yeah, thing. not the stone, but yes, water, fire, and uh, trees, of course, they are all. Okay, okay. And, but stone, stone is not, right? No. Okay. We, uh, Jainism, if at all, we divide in, uh, uh, to, not just Jainism, if you look at the whole universe also. The whole universe, if you divide them in two parts, if you have to divide them or if you have to explain uh, uh, the whole universe in two parts, it is basically living things and non-living things. Right. You divide everything among these two categories only. And mm -hmm. um, we have a whole, uh, you know, subject on uh, Jainism, you can say one uh, whole research which is do being done. Uh, about Jeev and Ajeev, that is living thing and the non-living thing. And there are so many categories, so many things to know. And I'm, I'm still, uh, um, you know, reading about it. And I've, I'm, uh, I've given a small, uh, maybe, um, you know, I've read a few books only. Agam is something very huge, but uh, uh, Agam is, uh, you can say, as they have Bible for uh, Christians and uh, Quran for uh, maybe Muslims. It is like, you know, that, that kind of Bible, we have Agams. Okay, and this in this we have, uh, there are so many things which have been clearly mentioned, saying that what living things and non-living things can be divided into and how many, uh, uh, the way it has been explained is amazing. You know, uh, today, even today, science is finding, the, finding out a little things about uh, living things and we feel so great about human being that we know that you know photosynthesis happens and that happens and all this has been already written uh, long long ago in agams in jainism okay then oh sorry one more. uh if there uh you mentioned the water has a water is the living thing right yes so water how could be living thing how could you explain water 
uh, see, as I said, in this session, uh, it will be very difficult to explain because uh, we have, uh, uh, you all believe, uh, we all know that we have five sense organs. Right, right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The first one being touch. Right. Okay. And then if at all we go further, we have this uh, taste and then we smell, we see, and then we hear. Right. Right. So in this water has we uh, um, in jainism it has been explained that uh, these things you know these five uh, senses so water has one of the sense and which is that one sense what can we do we, we can feel water right right we can feel we can touch water we can feel water and even if in uh, sci according to science also if you see water has a lot of uh, if you see with this uh, the instruments what uh, scientists and all use and you see there are so many tiny micro uh, very you know uh, micro living things in this and water itself is one kind uh, that that will take really a long time to explain but yes uh, st we strongly believe that uh, water has uh, life thank you thank you Thank you so much. We have still around 20 minutes for our question and answer session. Please ask your questions. So can I have one more question? <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, okay. Uh, according to our Buddhism, we believe the three types of realm, like desire realm and form, uh, form realm, and also formless realm. So is there, according to Jainism, do they believe that kind of realm? Uh, what do you believe? I, I, I mean, uh, there's some different world. There's so world. many different, uh, yes, world, like world. Mm -hmm. We believe there are so many countless of world like this earth. And also there are so many different types of worlds in this university, universe. So, and also, we just uh, make category three types of world. It's yeah. called one called we one call is the desire realm. So one types of world. There's mm -hmm. so many things according to places. Yeah. Okay. And other one is form form realm. Mm -hmm. And other is a formless realm. Okay. So is there any also is there gen is there bleep uh, like that kind of Realm or there's kind of different world. Is there any different uh, world? Only this. Yes, Jainism also believes that you know beyond this earth also uh, there are uh, there there are beings as uh, uh, not just what science have discovered that we have universe, we have nine uh, other planets and all. Not just that, but we have uh, Jainism also believe and we have one one thing called called uh, Jambu Dweep. And I'm not the right person maybe to explain more about it because I'm still studying about it. But then, yes, uh, you know, there also the life and the things exist. And we also, in Jainism also, they believe and that uh, there is a life beyond this earth as well. Yes, we do believe. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, can I ask one question? Yes, please. Thank you. So, there are, let's say, 24 Tetangaras in Jainism, right? Yes. So, that's the one with uh, Mahavira. So, what is the difference between the Tetangaras, between the 24 Tetangaras? No, no, no. Is there is no, uh, all Tetangaras are the same, but yes, uh, Rishabh Dev was the first Tetangara. And mm -hmm. now you'll have to understand what is Tirthankara, you know, uh, what exactly Tirthankar does or what exactly Tirthankar means. They, um, Tirthankaras or uh, those souls which, um, you know, which are free from all uh, kind of attachments, Rag, Dvesh, Man, Maya, Krodh, we all, uh, we have so many different categories in this, uh, you know, all karmas. They have, they have freed themselves from all the karmas. They have, their soul has, um, has no, not even one single uh, um, attachment with them and they are free souls now, okay? And after being that free soul, after uh, attaining their, um, um, going to moksha, 
they before that what they do is they form uh, four categories you know four uh, teeth we, what we call and teeth is not the place where we visit it is not the temple but it is uh, said that they they were the people who formed four teetha by name sadhu sadvi shravak and shravika okay that is these are the people who made people uh, the, the existing people understand what uh, dharma is what life is what um, you know how can you uh, come out of this uh, circle of life we die we again take birth we die we take birth because we have done some certain kind of karmas we some karmas are attached to our body uh, to our soul uh, so every time we have to take uh, we have to take birth on this earth maybe if not on this earth we have even that has been uh, um, again described in very detail but yes tirthankars are the or the souls uh, which are freed from themselves from all all kind of karma and they uh, had made these four tirthas that is shravak shravika is we people who have not taken diksha were not monks but we still follow jainism in um, the mo- uh, because we are born in this and we uh, we want to follow this that is uh, all the males will be called shravaks all the females in this jainism will be called uh, shravikas and the same with the sadhu and sadvis that is all uh, male uh, or who have taken uh, diksha uh, or who have become monks are called uh, sadhu and uh, the females are called uh, sadvis so no, there is no difference as such everyone are free souls and these are the people from time to time when uh, uh, we 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 all believe na that uh, after a certain time of any if at all we take a session suppose we attend some uh, motivational session after some time we again need one uh, motivational session to keep ourselves motivated and that way this dharma was again there were so many other uh, things which were happening and these are the people who could Uh, establish these four tirthankaras at their time and uh, gap and these tirthankaras have a uh, huge uh, age difference that is you know a uh, lot of uh, um, not just years but yeah thousands of years and then um, last may this mahavir uh, lord mahavira had come and even now maybe there are people uh, who have reached the moksha but to uh, there is again one uh, as i said it is so huge that it will be very difficult for me to make you understand in one single session but uh, we in uh, we believe that you know uh, i don't know the exact word of uh, that in english but um, ara we call it ara one particular thousands of years is called one par, uh, one ara so in like that we are in the sixth ara now so again in the next ara there will be more tirthankaras whom we will we'll know maybe but th- that will happen in a lot uh, it will take lot of years n- from now maybe but then yes that will also come so there is no difference between the first and the last tirthankara but we have 24 tirthankaras as well you know can i ask uh, one question hello sister uh raks uh raksha uh good afternoon uh good it's afternoon. so here my side it's afternoon so um, yeah so it's really uh interesting to uh learn a little bit about the jainism um uh that's a very kind of you and so uh um briefly gone through uh, your the speech about jainism that uh, you um, uh, gave above uh, i found so many uh, similarities very important similarities uh, uh, in our faith i mean you know in your uh, the religion and uh, my religion uh, those are the the uh, how the things are actually existing and uh, the other, other thing is uh, the, about the ahimsa the loving kindness so those are very uh, i think those are the core message of uh, uh, our religion and so but um before asking one question i just want to share my uh, little bit uh, my uh, personal viewpoint on that yeah. i don't know whether this uh, uh, opinion uh, match with uh, you people but uh, it's just uh, my personal viewpoint so uh you know um we all are um believer 
And um, so, but when we talk about the humanity, that's far more important uh, than religion. I think it's my uh, personal viewpoint because, uh, you know, everyone, every one of us uh, uh, has to survive with the loving kindness, uh, interdependence, uh, understanding. So the humanity, because when uh, the, the day we come uh, on this world, we were survived uh, with uh, love from our mom. But at that time, we uh, actually don't know, we don't have an idea about religion, what religion we follow. So uh, religion, the faith comes later. Uh, so the humanity comes first. So for my point, I don't know, I, I'm not saying that religion is not important. It's important, it's a, a, a method to, bring people uh, in a peaceful way. But uh, the far most, outmost important is humanity. So the ahimsa, the message of our uh, the religion uh, uh, is giving us is uh, quite, uh, it's very important about the ahimsa and the lapikanis. So, and also one very uh, uh, important, uh, the similarity is uh, the how the things are actually existing. So you, you gave an example with uh, writing uh, number six. When we look at, uh, from our side, we uh, see, we, uh, we, you know, we see it as uh, number six, but uh, from other side, opposite side, we uh, see that as a nine. So, uh, you know, everything, every pe people, everyone, everything existed in that way, according to the possessor. So that's a very uh, important message uh, that uh, uh, similarities that we have. So, um, but my, uh, now the, my question is, <laughs> so you said that uh, water and uh, uh, trees have, uh, has the, uh, uh, so, uh, Atma, right? Uh, so, so for example, tree uh, is a living thing. You said, is it because of the uh, absorbing minerals, waters, and they grow up and then uh, dead, died uh, finally? Is it because of that? Um, not just because of that. Yes, uh, even this is one part of it, maybe. But uh, see, as I said, we uh, in Jainism it has been categorized. Um, we we all you know we have five uh, senses, as I said. Okay, and um, uh, indriya we call it indriya. So even even the tiniest particle which you know can move by itself, or maybe you know if they can't move, they can grow, or they all these things have. Uh, some kind of uh, living uh, things in them. So that is why, and it is only not just because it grows or maybe it is uh, so we call that uh, they have life, but uh, there are, uh, they, we call it Vanaspati Kai. Okay, Vanaspati is uh, something which, uh, which comes in this category, wherein trees, plants and everything comes. So as, and I may not be the right person, as I said, uh, to explain this in uh, that particular, uh, in a clear way, because I myself am a student yet. Uh, but as, as I said, uh, this, yes, Jainism strongly believes that yes, there is life and uh, beyond human beings as well. And uh, as you said, trees have life, yes. And that even uh, now science have uh, approved to it, maybe, you know, we can say that even science believe that uh, uh, trees have lives. Okay, thank you. And as you said, you know, this is the most important thing is, again, Anikantvad. Uh, looking at the things, uh, looking at uh, things in their own perspective and believing in that and not saying, you know, not uh, having disbelief or this uh, agreement with uh, what you think or you believe in. So uh, the whole idea about Jainism is, I, if at all, we have to short, uh, shortly and very crisply, if we have to say, it's Ahimsa and uh, Anekantva. These two things, if we understand in complete, uh, you know, detail, then uh, there is no question of, uh, uh, you know, only thinking about religious and uh, religion, but it is about uh, overall as a human and uh, yeah. as a being of our, 
you know our existence itself thank you thank you thank you so much so one last question please yes please. we have only 8 minutes so one last question yeah is there anyone who want to ask any question can i yes okay. sir. Of course. yes yes yeah. uh jains uh, are sadhu and sadhaka right and there are two types of uh, monk or nun i think right yes so is there any different of their bow sadhu and sadhika uh, according to our uh, buddhist bhikkhu and bhikkhu there are two types of mm -hmm. so maybe similar sadhu and sadhika mm -hmm. and with the difference bow also they are quite different and so i want to know is there any difference according no no all uh, sadhus and sadhvis all have to take uh, panch mahavrat that is they have to take uh, vows about uh, these five things that they'll not be doing in their lifetime but yeah uh, in uh, in jainism as uh, till now we have seen whoever becomes uh, in in again in jainism there are sub categories you know we have shwetambar digambar we have uh, mandir marki we have uh, terapantis we uh, there are so many categories in that but in overall in all these we have seen that there is you know no uh, all all the acharyas who become the head of one that particular uh, what they call if it all shwetambar digambar in again in that terapanti or uh, bai sampradha or whatever we we categorize them as Uh, all uh, the head who becomes it's usually the male that mm -hmm. is what we have seen uh, but it is not that you know uh, there is any difference between uh, the vows they take it is uh, both are uh, both have to take panch mahavrat to become uh, a sadhu or a sadhvi or a nun or a monk they all mm -hmm. have to. okay only five vow right only yeah. five yes no, panch more than hmm. panch mahavrat okay Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, one thing, uh, can I ask one question? Yes, please. Yes. So, um, actually, it is said that uh, Buddhism and uh, Jainism are the twins religion. <laughs> so uh, we have seen many similarities between two, between yes. the two, and also, of course, uh, there are some differences. So, uh, can you? or point out what are the major differences and what are the major similarities between the two religions uh, no no uh, i i cannot say that there is you know this particular difference or maybe you know but yeah uh, to tell one thing on a lighter note maybe not very serious but yeah, so many times it happens that you know when uh, uh, in our jains only the uh, people like us you know who who are still studying or maybe trying to understand the religion we, which where we belong to when we uh, we have this mahavir jayanti this is one of the biggest uh, you can say uh, festival uh, as a festival we all uh, celebrate all jains do we all come together uh, no matter if we are digambar shwetambar we all have one uh, common thing is uh, mahavir jayanti which uh, uh, mahavir swami's birth date you know we all celebrate this day and we all fast we try to fast you know the whole day 24 hours will not eat anything and only water that too before the sunset and all that but even in this what happens when uh, nowadays it is a trend that you know everyone has to wish uh, they they make these uh, flyers or maybe you know they create on uh, online uh, they they um, uh, make this poster uh, poster and then they wish each other happy happy mahavir jayanti in that also many a times uh people take buddha's uh, photo and uh, they use that photo and they say happy mahavir jayanti <laughs> the basic difference also uh, people many a times miss on that buddha had never given up uh, wearing clothes you know if at all we see that we, uh, and uh, in uh, all all our tirthankars had left even that they were without clothes even uh, when uh, they became sadhus so even that simple of difference so many people miss on they take buddha's nice uh, some nice photo they'll take and they'll paste it on uh, their uh, poster and, and they'll say happy mahavir jayanti 
wherein it is buddha's photo if at all people who know a little the major difference may be you know that uh, simple difference not major but simple difference that they are, they they never wore clothes and uh, buddha was always with their uh, you know thing but still people do that so uh, yeah definitely there are um, you know um, because uh, i don't know much about uh, buddhism and i uh, i'll be very frank with you all that i i'm still trying hard and uh, to learn even about jainism now so as i said if at all you know uh, even before we start anything we say michami dukram that is if knowingly or unknowingly i have given some wrong information or some which is not to the point or maybe the accurate way then uh, please forgive me uh, so that is what we tell and we then start because i am very uh, very the uh, small part of uh, this you know, understanding the process of jainism so difference of course there will be because everyone as uh, some things uh, to differentiate between but the common things definitely we all know that we all promote you know even if it is buddhism or jainism we want to promote ahimsa for sure we don't want violence we want uh, the religious harmony to grow day by day and this one thing which bond us together so well so thank you um, oh yes thank mm. you so much yeah wonderful and uh, one i thing i would like to ask you is that uh, yes um, actually there is a very good uh, practice of ahimsa in daily basis of um, jain practitioners so and also ahimsa is the basis of the the harmonizing the world peace and friendship so can you give us some examples of ahimsa practice in Uh, daily actions of jain practitioners so which can help the audience uh, how to uh, to practice uh, ahimsa non violence in daily life yeah uh, so uh, the very first thing that you know uh, we all are uh, um, all the jains by default are pure vegetarians you know we all uh, believe that uh, um even in uh, when we talk about veg- uh, vegetarians and vegetables also have life again in that we have categories such uh, you know sachit or achit uh, that also will take a longer time to explain but yes to uh, to be in a, as you said in a simple way how can we follow so uh, man vachan and kaya okay man is from uh, my um, you know my words or maybe my actions and uh, uh not by words not by actions and not by emotions anything you know in that way we try not to hurt any any living thing man vachan and kaya so uh, this three things is uh by my actions by my words and uh, by my thoughts i'll not try to hurt or harm any of the um living things so this way we can uh, easily follow ahimsa by not saying bad to people or maybe not hurting them uh, not you know uh, hitting or by being physical with and uh, not killing or maybe not uh, uh, promoting any kind of himsa which directly is uh, physical that, that is you know even if it is uh, egg also we we feel that you know even egg has life inside obviously right egg only when uh, it uh, um, breaks from inside we we get this uh, living things from them so even that has life and we feel that you know we should not use that and we should not hurt that and when it comes to vegetables and fruits also uh, there is certain way in which we all use uh, vegetables and fruits once it is uh, been plucked and then uh, kept for some time the and then we use it and all that there are so many things in which we um, can promote uh, ahimsa in day to day life but basically and the major uh, big thing is you know man vachan kaya se we try not to hurt any any of the living being okay. okay thank you so much thank you thank you so much everyone thank you all the participants for the good questions and wonderful answers and uh, so in our so we don't have uh, more time for question and answer and sorry so it is the time for the word of thanks it will be delivered by the head of english education department of uh, saraji 
monastic university mr please tell me your word of thanks It is the time for the word of thanks of Sandarji. Okay. Yes. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I would like to extend heartfelt greetings and uh, uh, heartfelt thanks to Honorable uh, Raksha Jain. And, uh, for your insightful and resourceful speech on religious harmony from a Jain perspective. So, uh, and you have presented it so very well and it, it's uh, really impre impressive. Um, so then you have, uh, you have talked that, uh, so then we should have a, the religious, religious harmony. To have a religious harmony, we should have a, a harmony between the people and among the people, religious people. So then the, we have the religious harmony between the people uh, through, not only through the, the external harmony, the external harmony, so that we can, with the, the religious people can live in the external harmony, but we can live in the external harmony in harmony through the internal harmony. And so the question that arises is how we can have our internal harmony so you have presented two uh, the factors that can contribute to have an internal uh, harmony. So the internal harmony can be achieved uh, through the two factors, main two factors. The one is, is uh, ahimsa, uh, and one is uh, and uh, having the uh, uh, the uh, having the the multinational multinational view. Uh, it means the res it it means that the respecting the uh, the uh, multi views. So when you explain the ahimsa, so then the key is live and let live. So many people and the, uh, many our friends and brothers and sisters, they want all human beings, not only human beings, all sentient beings, want to live, want to live happily with the peaceful peacefully but uh, many don't want to let others live happily peacefully and they try to live themselves happily through uh, uh, not letting others happily try to killing others trust trying to destroying others uh, uh, the property life and uh, taking out others property so they are, they, are, they are not going to let others live happy and peaceful, but they want to live happily themselves. So then the key point is we, as like us, we want to live happily and peacefully. So there are, of course, others too want to live happily and peacefully. As we have the right to live, I mean, we have the right and potential to be happy life. So there, of course, our other human brothers and sisters and all sentient beings have the, the same right and the same potential to be happy and peaceful. So to have a two, the, 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 now the key points live in how, why, and how we can let live others happy. So then to, to let live others happy, we should really have the, uh, the idea that we should, there are the different kinds of the views and that we use are the different approaches to, uh, to promote the peace and to develop the happiness within oneself and, and among the uh, human brothers and sisters. So in that, that sense, we should respect others' rights. We should respect other human brothers, sisters, the different views. And at the same time, we should also uh, have the practice of non-possession. That means because this today's world is not uh, in the many many ways uh, the problem is uh, they are not satisfied with their own the possessions they are not satisfied their own property if one if actually we are we the one because we have just two uh, I mean that one one two foot two feet so then two foot that means. The, 
actually we i mean the two pairs of the shoes is sufficient it's uh, it's sufficient for the two foot but some people have the said that the more than 20 pairs of the 20 or the 10 pairs of the shoes so that is uh, i mean over the satisfaction that is more than 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 the sufficient the materials right so the non possession is the really uh, the one of the best practice we should always try to have in our daily life to live oneself happily and to let others live happily right and uh, and uh, when i listen to your speech it reminds me one message of the the, the mahatma gandhi ji so uh, the mahatma gandhi ji once said that at our world earth has the ability to satisfy the needs or to satisfy or the fulfill the needs of all humanity but the world or our earth has not potential not ability to satisfy the greed of a single human being so now these days the problem is the human greed is increasing so then that means the resources the natural resources like the soil the oil and air and water is not sufficient not sufficient to fulfill the uh, the needs of the human beings that is because of the increasing level of the human greeds so uh, i think so then the ahimsa and practice of ahimsa and non possession really adds a lot to develop the the lasting peace for the uh, the generation for the generation for the present generation and generations to come uh, in the future so you have really presented very well i would like to thank you a lot for your wonderful speech and uh, plus i would like to extend my heartfelt the thanks to uh, our today's moderator venerable jank the senior uh, translators of the Sarajevo translation department and i would like to um, uh, thank to venerable tinzin tajie for uh, simultaneously simultaneously translating uh, your speech in tibetan language and uh, and i will also would like to thank all the the audience and participants who have participated here on zoom live and those who view on facebook live so i would like to thank you all and with this uh, i hope and pray we we shall share uh, the this beautiful blue planet with more smile on the face and more joys in our heart so uh, through that way we can at least uh, at least leave us some some the natural resources uh, for the generations to come in the future <laughs> so thank you thank you so much uh, raksha jain hope to see you again in the future uh, once again more and more so that we can and have the more uh, the sessions and through that way we can improve our own the mutual understanding and mutual respect and through that way we can really create the the peace and harmony within uh, within uh, one and all of us so lastly on the behalf of the seraji translation department and the and on the behalf of the teachers and the students of the seraji translation department uh, so then i would like to uh, offer you a small token of the gratitude uh, this uh, incense and uh, this uh, traditional scarf as a token of the gratitude from the depth of our hearts so uh, thank you so much thank you so we can uh, we can post this uh, this uh, this uh, scarf and the, uh, the incense so kindly uh, send us your uh, residential address <laughs> thank you thank you thank you all thank you thank you thank you venerable luxembourg and thank you all so the session is successfully concluded see you all again in the future thank you all thank you thank you